And we're back. All right, so now we need to know the ranges, right? We've classified IP addresses, done all these different things. Now we need to know the private range of addresses. And remember I told you in previous lessons that it's very important to understand which class of address you're going to use uh, privately in your network or publicly, but privately in your network as well because you don't want to run out. So the range for a class A, meaning the entire range, 10.0.0.1 through 10.255.255.254. And we need to wind that. There we go. All right, so that is the, so basically the whole entire 10, you see an IP address that starts with the 10, it is a private IP address, private. Uh, the broadcast, uh, I didn't put the network ID, network ID would be all zeros, obviously. And the broadcast address would be 10.255.255.255, okay? I didn't put the network ID, but you all, nah, you, you'll know, it's 10.0000, right? One before one. So that's good there. And then what CIDR? What well, classless interdomain routing, correct? So there's going to be a slash eight. And we need to bold that because I can barely see it myself. Let's go ahead and uh, use Format Painter here. And we'll do, all right, but the rest is red there, so let's not do that. Thank God for Format Painter. Very easy. There we go. Ah, poof. Okay, we'll do it that way. No, I don't like that either. I'm going to change this. You know, there was an instructor in my previous life that he would write his name on the board until it was perfect. And then he would be in the class. But uh, I just didn't take that long. Saturday 8. Saturday 8. All right, so that's your class A range. So if you were to do an IP config on any computer and you see that they have a 10, you can, you know, you can say, oh, okay, well, if they're using a private class A range, they must have a lot of nodes to use a private class A, and not necessarily so. I see a lot of companies that have maybe a couple hundred, 20 computers, and they decided to use a class A. Because you, privately, you can do whatever you want, but always think towards the future, always think in growth, that if you are gonna grow, that you have the room to do so, all right? Now, n everything is normal there, side or eight, so that means that the the eight on that side, whoa, I moved it with my shoulder. I'm so big, okay? I moved that with the shoulder. So the 10, that's where the, the line is, always remains 10, and there's a reason why I'm saying this, and then the rest change. Therefore, it is a side or eight. So now we're gonna do a B. 172.16.0.1 to 172.31.255.254. Uh -oh, Interesting. Let's put the broadcast. 172.31.255.255. And as we all know, by default, a class B has a CIDR 16. But, we'll make another little thing right here. We'll say Cisco. Let's go ahead, nope, let's go ahead and format that. If I can actually get the mouse to do what I want it to do. Format here, format there. And then we can get rid of that format painter. Now, this is true by default. If you were to put any one of these private IP addresses, in the properties of your TCP IP, you, let's say you put 172.16.0.1, and you hit the tab key, it's going to recognize 172 that's part of the B range, therefore it will automatically populate your subnet mask as 255.255.0.0. But, why does it go from, one, from 16 to 31? And let me zoom in a little bit. I wonder if you guys can see that. Make sure you can see that well. I see it goes from 16 to 31. So is the line really 
between the second and third octet? I think not. I think the line is in between somewhere in the second octet. Let's take a look at see how that works out using our submitting techniques, which all of you have done and practiced constantly since you know me. Okay? So 172, uh, we'll do it here. 172.16 doesn't change, that stays the same. Right? Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Correct? 16 is that first number. Hmm. So that means that my line is right there. Because that fourth bit, that bit next to that line, the value of that bit is 16. And then if you were to add, well not those, if you were to add these bit values here, it's 15. So you take the 15, and am I in the right place? I'm not in the right place. I apologize. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's make this bigger here. There we go. Don't want to confuse anybody. I almost did. Let's put our line where it belongs in the second octet. All right. Because that bit value is 16. Then, as I was saying, if you were to add those bits, it's 15. So 15 plus 16 is 31. Then you have, you add these bits in the third octet, which is 255. Then you have 255. And then the last octet, you add those bits right there, 255, 255. So that's indeed how Cisco, in their, in their books, they go into that granular detail to show you how they came about that range from 16 to 31. It's truly a CIDR 12. And Cisco books are the only ones that you'll see something like that. Because that's the detail that they go into. They want you to know everything, how everything breaks down, which is great. And it's interesting. Because there's always a curiosity as, hey, why? Why isn't it? Why did they stop at 31? Why isn't it 172, 16, 172, 16? Why did they pick 172.16 to 172.31? Why those numbers? Well, now you know. Because the true cider is really in the second octet with a, that's a, a cider 12. That's how they come up with that incrementation of 16 and they go all the way to 31. Now, I'm not telling you when you go take a test, if they ask you what is the default mass for a class B address, you're going to say, well, last told me a CIDR 12. No, 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 no. We're doing private IP addressing. In an examination, they're not going to go into that granular detail either. So if they ask you, what is the default subnet mask of a class B, you will say CIDR 16 or 255-25500. Because like I said, if you were to put this address, the 172.16.01, into your TCP IP properties under the IP address field, and hit tab, your subnet mask will automatically fill with 255-255-00. But, if sometime in the future, they decide to give you a more granular question that states something to this effect. In private IP addressing, the class B range, what is the true subnet mask? If they ask you something like that, then they're hinting to the CIDR 12, as you see over here on this side, the CIDR 12, right? Because that's where your line is at. But there hasn't been any question like that asked at all. There hasn't even been a question about what subnet mass, what's the default subnet mass of a class B for the CCNA. But again, if asked, or at least now you know, you can do it at cocktail parties, you can let them know what the real subnet mask is for a private class B address, why the range, you can say, why the range is from 16 to 31, because of that CIDR 12. But again, do your research. Do your research. Go to Cisco Press Books 
that's where you're going to see that information. All right. All right. Now, now that you know that I took you behind the curtain and you saw the secret to that. Now, let me see if you know the answer to this next, to the C. Okay. In the C, we have 192.168.0.1. To 192.168.255.254. Interesting once again. Yes, and things just get shifted all over the place. Okay, let me do a control Z there. I don't I don't like that at all. We're just going to get this right here. Format painter there. Did I number? And it still gets shifted that way. That's lovely. All right. So we're just going to remain like this. We'll bold it. And we'll just increase the size of it slowly but surely. And then we'll bring it out this way. Bring it out this way. There we go. Good enough. So What's the secret there? What is the mass, uh, the broadcast? Obviously, we know what that is. That's going to be, let me format this real quick. I try to make life easy on myself, and I don't, th I don't think I have. 192.168.255.255. All right, that's what that broadcast is for that one. But what is the CIDR? As we all know, for a class C, um, it's a CIDR 24. But is it? Take a look at the example above and take a look at what's happening below. What is the true submit mask? You have the 192.168 that doesn't change. What actually changes is starts in the third octave, yeah, from 0 to 255. So really what they did was just cut it down the middle. So Cisco's explanation as to why that happens is because it's a CIDR 16. But again, you will never, ever, unless specifically asked the question, like I stated previously, you will always answer a CIDR 24. But now you know that really the dividing line is between the second and third octet. That's why the third octet can change, but the first two do not. If by default it was here in the 24, then nothing can change after that but it will so that's why you're allowed so many networks using that type of address because the line actually is a CIDR 16 and again these private IP addresses uh, again use internally they they were made on purpose for us to use internally they took out chunks from the entire range and said okay this will be used you can do whatever you want with them inside your network just know that you can't route with them outside like in, we talked about in the previous lecture, they're not routable on the internet unless you use you know, some, some type of NAT in order to get out, you need a public IP address. But for Class E, that's your range. Do you need to know this? Yes, you do need to know this. At least the default ciders, we all know as we explained in, earlier in the course, but you need to know the range of a private IP address. You must know the range of a private IP address if you're gonna be in networking. As well as the other, we learn how to classify an address. You need to learn how to classify private IP addresses as well. All right? All right, we've come to the end of the lecture. That's not a big deal. Private IP addressing. Not Rob on the internet, only use internal. I'll see you in the next one.